Michael bolted upright in bed. He was drenched in sweat, his heart hammered in his chest. It was just a dream, a terrible, vivid dream. He glanced around the room. Everything seemed normal. His posters still hung on the wall. His desk sat in the corner, covered in school books. He took a deep breath, trying to calm down. The dream felt so real. He was trapped in a dark room, chained to a wall. A voice boomed in his ear, telling him he had to eat. He had to eat 100 souls. It was the only way to survive. Michael shook his head, trying to clear the images. It was just a dream. It had to be. He stood up and walked over to the window. The sun was starting to rise, casting an orange glow across the sky. It was going to be a new day, a normal day. As Michael turned away from the window, he noticed something strange. His reflection looked off. His eyes seemed sharper, his teeth more pointed. He shook his head, attributing it to the lingering fear from the dream, but a deep sense of unease settled in the pit of his stomach. The voice from his dream echoed in his head as he went about his morning routine. 100 souls. You have 24 hours. What did it even mean? It was just a dream, he kept telling himself. But the fear was a constant companion. He couldn't shake off the image of the chained figures in his dream, their pleading eyes, their cries for help. The voice had called it the Monster Survivor Challenge, eat or be eaten, a horrifying thought. At school, Michael couldn't concentrate. He saw flashes of the dream. He heard whispers of the voice. His reflection in the bathroom mirror startled him again. His eyes were definitely different, redder, like glowing embers. He tried to tell his best friend Emily about the dream, about the voice, and the strange feeling he couldn't shake off. But the words caught in his throat. How could he explain something so crazy? He sounded crazy even thinking it. As the day wore on, the changes became more pronounced. His fingernails hardened, becoming more like claws. His teeth felt sharper, the canines growing longer. Panic welled up inside him. The dream was becoming a reality. He snuck out of school, the fear propelling him. He had to figure out what was happening to him. He ducked into an alleyway, away from prying eyes. He looked at his reflection in a shattered mirror fragment on the ground. He recoiled in horror. His face was longer, more angular. His skin had taken on a greyish hue. The glowing red eyes stared back at him, filled with a hunger he didn't recognize. He wasn't dreaming. He was becoming a monster. The voice returned, colder and clearer now. You have 20 hours, 100 souls, or become the feast. The message was clear. He had to eat, or he would be eaten. A gnawing hunger began to consume him, a primal urge he couldn't ignore. It wasn't the familiar pang of an empty stomach. This hunger was different, deeper, darker. It craved something more than food. It craved souls. He thought of the people around him, his classmates, his teachers, his friends. Were they the souls the voice demanded? He pushed the thought away. He couldn't hurt them. He wouldn't. But the hunger pulsed within him, growing stronger with every passing moment. He found himself drawn to crowded places, the scent of so many people overwhelming the park, the mall, the bus station. Everywhere he looked, he saw potential prey. His new instincts battled with his humanity. He tried to fight the hunger. He tried to rationalize. It was just a dream, a nightmare. But the monstrous reflection he saw everywhere he looked told him otherwise. He was trapped, trapped in a nightmare he couldn't wake up from. The voice returned, its tone laced with urgency. Ten hours left, the hunger grows, choose your feast. Michael could no longer ignore the terrifying reality. He had to make a choice, to feed the monster he was becoming or become food himself. Panic surged through him. He couldn't do it. He couldn't hurt anyone. He ran. He ran until his lungs burned and his legs screamed for mercy. But there was no escape. The hunger followed him, relentless and all-consuming. He found himself in a dark alley, the stench of garbage filling his nostrils. A figure huddled in the shadows. A homeless man, asleep and vulnerable. The monster within him stirred. Michael's mind screamed. He had to get away but his body, driven by the insatiable hunger, wouldn't obey. His claws extended, his fangs bared. He was losing the battle for his soul. As Michael closed in on the trembling figure, a blood-curdling scream pierced the night. It wasn't from the homeless man, it was his own. Wrong choice! Suddenly, blinding light engulfed him. He shielded his eyes, the scream dying in his throat. When the light subsided, he found himself back in his room. He was drenched in sweat, his heart pounding against his ribs. Had it all been a dream? He looked at his hands. They were his hands, no claws. He rushed to the mirror. His reflection was normal. His eyes were their usual brown, his teeth human. Relief washed over him, leaving him weak and shaken. But then he noticed something on his desk, a single white feather. It hadn't been there before. As he reached out to touch it, the voice returned, colder and more menacing than ever. One hundred souls you have until midnight tomorrow. Don't fail again. <laughs>